Good evening, wherever you are. This is James Bowman III again with one of our marital and family encouragement discussions. Glad to be back with you again. Have a great topic tonight. Uh, But first, I want to preview what we're going to talk about next time is preparation. Right. So stay tuned for that. Many of us think that, you know, we're having a hard time. It's it's listen, it's not for no reason. (laughs) That's a double negative, but it's a preparation process going on. So so be stay tuned for that. So tonight, what we want to talk about uh, in our marital and family encouragement. And this is season one, episode eight is listen, hope is a strategy. Now, first of all, I want to put a disclaimer out here. Uh, this is not a political discussion. I don't do politics on on these discussions. Uh, I do like to discuss politics, but this forum is for marital and family encouragement. So everything I talk about, uh, I may use uh, politics as an example, but it is about marital and family encouragement. In the 2008 campaign, uh, then candidate Obama discussed hope a lot. Now, this was not a new concept. Uh, we had Reverend Jesse Jackson back in the 80s. And he discussed, uh, he would say, keep hope alive, <laughs> keep hope alive. And, and you know, I, I, as that uh, when President uh, or then candidate Obama was discussing hope, I would hear some say hope is not a strategy. What kind of strategy is that hope? And that's what I want to deal with today with fa- uh, uh, marital and family encouragement thought. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, I would submit to you. That hope is a strategy. Hear me out. Those of you who are familiar with the uh, with American history. Understand that uh, during slavery times, there would be uh, slaves who sang a lot of hymns, you know, uh, spirituals. And they may be singing a song like I got shoes, you got shoes, all God's children got shoes. But if you look down at their feet, you would understand they had no shoes. And so then the op- the obvious question is, why are you singing about having shoes when you are shoeless? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's because of hope. Their current situation, really, there was no evidence to show that they would ever have shoes. But they sang of a time when they and their children would have shoes. And without that hope, they might have just perished because they would say, you know what, what's the point? But they pressed on because when the systems of the world are built to orchestrate your demise, uh, you have to have hope. Our Jewish brothers and sisters during the Holocaust, I have to believe that they would think though we're being slain and our relatives are being burned in ovens. That evil thing that happened, they had to believe a better day is coming. And hope, ladies and gentlemen, kept them believing and kept them moving forward that a better day would come for them and their children. What about the Israelites when they were making bricks without straw? They had to believe there's a better day coming for our children. Now, you may be asking yourself, how does hope apply to marital and family encouragement? Well, I'm glad you ask. Uh, That is a great question. Ladies and gentlemen, I am persuaded. I'm a believer now that we have got to speak to our children as they will be and not as they are. What, what, What does that mean? We've got to instill hope in them that even though they may be having a bad day, even though they may have gotten a bad grade and they, they wanted to do better. We've got to tell them, listen, the grade is not you. Sure, you wanted to do better. Sure, we believe you can do better. But let's pick yourself up. Let's try harder and let's do it again. Because your current situation does not have to dictate your ultimate destiny. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the way God sees us. When I stumble and I fall and I make mistakes, God sees, you know, James, James, He's better than that. I mean, he may have God may have to chastise me and discipline, but he knows you're better than that, James, and you're going to get better. And so this is this is a, a, a powerful thing. We've got to instill hope in our children. 
The Bible says where there's no vision, the people perish. You know, your brain will just shut down if you have no hope at all. No vision for the future. You know, when my I shared with you on uh, last, I think maybe a couple posts ago that I had my grandchildren. I was so honored to have them with me, my wife and I. Uh, we didn't have an opportunity to get, you know, our family is so spread out. We couldn't get our grandchildren to see everybody. But we, we, we spent some time uh, with our grandsons, uh, looking forward to spending time with our granddaughter. But every night before they would go to bed, I would, I would sit, you know, put them on the bed. They would lay on the bed. My wife was there and my, my older daughter, uh, my youngest daughter who's in college. And I would tell them, all of them, I'd say, listen, you are great. And don't let anyone tell you differently. Period. You are great. You're going to stumble. You're going to fall. You're going to make mistakes. But you are great. Jehovah, who created the biology to allow you to be born, has numbered your hairs. It's not like he knows the total. He said he numbered them as if that's hair number one, that's hair number two. A God like that who took that much detail and fearfully and wonderfully made us, you are great. And so don't be discouraged. Don't worry about the, the, the constant fighting in the media, the, the, the ugly political discourse, uh, people killing each other, racism, uh, sexism. People, people don't care about God's, God's children. Don't worry about that. You continue to press forward, be a positive, and don't walk around like a victim. Because you are a wonderful creation. You're a wonderful creation. And don't let anyone marginalize hope. Because your hope, your vision for your future cannot be taken away from you. Hope can gird you up while you're working toward your destiny. The thought of where you're heading and you'll press and you put the Bible says that we should press toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. That means I haven't gotten there yet, but I'm pressing. I hope that I can get better. I hope that I can be a better person, a better father, uh, a better Christian, better toward my co-workers. That's hope, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Listen, that's our talk for tonight. Uh, hope is a strategy. You have a great you're going to have a great day. You're having a great day. Because we know that where we are may not want to, may not be where we want to be, but we're going to get better. God bless you. We'll talk at you next time. Remember, uh, we're gonna the next thing we're gonna talk about next time is preparation. That is so vital to understand why some things happen. It's preparing you for your next assignment. Right? God bless you. We'll see you next time. Got some people praying for me.